Is your Blender setup configured to view the best results? Check right now to make sure you have the right boxes checked and the right settings enabled for faster rendering, smoother viewport response times, and the ability for your computer to handle more geometry. The volume step rate controls how Blender calculates light as it passes through volumes like smoke, fog, or clouds. By default, the step size is quite small, which means Blender takes more samples to calculate the light, giving you very accurate results, but also massively increasing render times. Increasing the step rate makes Blender take bigger steps, so the render finishes faster, though with less detail in the volume. Lowering it gives you finer, more realistic detail, but at the cost of speed. You'll find this setting in the Render Properties Volumes panel. A good workflow is to keep the step rate higher when previewing or doing test renders, then lower it for the final render to get that nice detailed volume look. Force fields in Blender let you control how objects like particles, cloth, or rigid bodies react to invisible forces. And two of the most important settings are strength and falloff. Strength controls how powerful the force is. A higher value means particles or objects will be pushed or pulled more aggressively, while lower values give you more subtle effects. For example, a wind force with low strength might gently sway grass, while a high strength could send particles flying. Falloff determines how the force weakens over distance. Uh, with no falloff, the force affects everything equally no matter how far away it is. Adding falloff makes the effect stronger near the field and weaker as objects move away, which feels much more natural. By balancing strength and falloff, you can fine-tune force fields to create anything from gentle environmental effects like breezes to dramatic impacts like explosions or vortex pulls. In Blender, the difference between relative and absolute paths found under Preferences, File Paths, controls how Blender links to external files like textures, HDRIs, or linked assets. With absolute paths, Blender saves the full file location on your system. This works fine on your computer, but if you move the project to another system, those file links will likely break unless the exact same folder structure exists. Relative paths, on the other hand, save the file location in relation to your Blender project file. This makes your project portable. If you move the entire project folder to another computer, Blender will still know where to find everything. A good workflow is to use relative paths for projects you plan to share, move, or back up, and only stick with absolute paths if the files are stored somewhere fixed and won't ever move. This way, you avoid missing textures or broken links when opening your project elsewhere. When you install a new version of Blender, it doesn't automatically remember your old settings especially your key bindings and workspace setup. To avoid going through the hassle of setting everything up from scratch, just head over to Preferences, Key Map, and export your key bindings. This way, you can easily import them into a new version of Blender or even use the same file on another computer without redoing the whole setup again. If you don't enable your graphics card in Blender, it will default to using the CPU, and that's way slower. Uh, graphics cards are built to handle heavy 3D tasks, and since they're expensive, you want to make sure you're actually using yours. Just go to Edit, Preferences, System, and under Cycles Render Devices, select your GPU. Also, make sure you switch to GPU rendering in your render settings. This simple step can massively speed up your renders and give you much smoother performance. Blender is powerful, but it's also known to crash, especially under heavy loads or sometimes just randomly. When that happens, there's always the risk of your project getting corrupted or losing progress. That's why autosave is a lifesaver. Blender automatically creates backup files in the background, and knowing where to find them can save you a lot of stress. You can even go to File, Recover, Autosave to jump straight to the folder where your backups are stored. On top of that, you can manually save different stages of your projects using Save Incremental which creates a new version of your project without overwriting the previous one. This way, you'll always have a safe copy to fall back on. Light paths control how Blender uh, calculates light bouncing around your scene, and they have a huge impact on both render quality and speed. By default, Blender uses fairly high values, which can look great but often take much longer to render. If you lower the number of bounces for things like diffuse, glossy, and transmission, you can dramatically speed up your render times with little to no visible loss in quality. You'll find these settings under the Render Properties Light Paths panel. For most scenes, reducing unnecessary bounces, 
like setting transparency to four or less or limiting caustics, can make your renders finish much faster while still looking clean. And if you're working with objects that use transparency, like leaves or glass, and you notice dark pixels where they overlap, simply increase the transparency bounces until those artifacts disappear. The output settings in Blender determine how your final renders and animations are saved, and getting them right can save you a lot of frustration later. Under the Output Properties tab, you'll find options for resolution, frame rate, and file format. Resolution sets the size of your final image or animation. By default, it's 1920 by 1080, which is standard HD. You can increase it for higher quality or lower it for faster test renders. Frame rate controls how smooth your animation plays back. 24 FPS is the film standard, while 30 or 60 FPS is more common for online videos and gameplay. Finally, the format determines how your render is saved. PNG is perfect for still images or sequences with transparency. EXR is ideal if you need high dynamic range for compositing, and if you want a single video file straight out of Blender, use FFmpeg Video, MP4. Choosing the right combination here, make sure your renders look great and are ready for the platform you're delivering them on. The rigid body world settings control how Blender calculates physics simulations for rigid objects, like falling bricks, bouncing balls, or collapsing walls. Two of the most important settings here are simulation steps and the solver type. Simulation steps determine how many times per frame Blender calculates the physics. Fewer steps make the simulation faster, but can cause objects to clip through each other or jitter. Increasing the steps gives you more accurate results, especially for fast-moving or small objects, though it takes longer to compute. If you want more precision, you can increase the solver's quality settings, but keep in mind that this will also slow things down. Balancing steps and solver settings is key. You want enough accuracy to avoid glitches, but not so much that your simulations become too heavy to work with in real time. The subdivision surface modifier is what smooths and adds detail to your models by subdividing the geometry. It has two main settings you should always pay attention to. Levels Viewport and Levels Render. Levels Viewport controls how smooth your object looks while you're working in the 3D view. Higher values make the model look better, but can also slow down your viewport performance, especially on complex meshes. Levels Render is separate and only affects how smooth the object is when you hit Render. This means you can keep the viewport level low for faster, smoother editing while cranking up the render level for a polished, detailed final result. A good habit is to keep the viewport level at 1 or 2, and only raise the render level to 3 or 4 when needed. This keeps your workflow responsive without sacrificing clone quality in the final output. The cloth simulation in Blender relies heavily on a few key settings to control how realistic and stable your cloth behaves. Quality steps, pressure, and collision. Quality steps determine how many times Blender calculates the cloth per frame. Lower values make the sim faster but can look jittery or unstable. Higher values smooth things out and prevent weird stretching, though they take more time to compute. Pressure adds an inflatable effect to the cloth, making it behave like a balloon or cushion. This is great for things like air-filled props, balloons, or even simulating puffy jackets. Adjusting the pressure value controls how much the cloth expands. Collision settings decide how the cloth interacts with other objects or with itself. Increasing collision quality reduces clipping and helps the cloth wrap around objects more naturally. But again, it comes at the cost of simulation speed. For the best results, balance these three. Keep quality steps high enough for stability, tweak pressure for the look you want, and raise collision quality only as much as necessary to avoid glitches without slowing things down too much. The cavity shader in Blender's viewport overlays is a powerful tool for modeling and texturing because it makes surface details much easier to see. When enabled, it highlights the tiny ridges, edges, and crevices on your model by darkening recessed areas and brightening raised ones. This doesn't affect your final render, it's purely for the viewport, but it can really help when sculpting, modeling, or adjusting materials since you can clearly see the form and definition of your geometry. You'll find it in the viewport shading options, the little drop down next to the sphere icons. Turn on cavity, and you can tweak settings like ridge and valley intensity to control how strong the effect looks. It's especially useful on dense meshes where subtle shapes might otherwise be hard to spot. 
Persistent data in Blender, found under Render Properties Performance, is a setting that can massively speed up repeated renders, especially when you're making small tweaks and re-rendering the same scene. Normally, every time you hit Render, Blender clears out all cache data, things like geometry, shading, and textures, then reloads everything from scratch. With persistent data enabled, Blender keeps that information in memory between renders, so it doesn't have to rebuild it every single time. This is incredibly useful when doing test renders or animations, since you'll notice much faster render start times. The trade-off is that it uses more RAM, and if your scene is huge, it can sometimes cause memory issues. But for most workflows, keeping persistent data on will save you a lot of time and make iteration much smoother. Auto-pack resources in Blender found under File External Data make sure that all your external files like textures, images, or sound files are automatically packed into the .blend file. Normally, Blender just links to those resources from wherever they're stored on your computer. That means if you move your project to another computer or share it without the linked files, Blender won't be able to find them. By enabling auto-pack resources, every time you save, Blender bundles those external files directly inside your project. The big advantage is portability. You can open the .blend anywhere and nothing will be missing. The downside is that your file size will increase, especially if you're using lots of large textures or audio files. It's a great option if you know you'll be moving projects around, sending them to other people, or backing them up, since you won't have to worry about broken links or missing assets. Obviously, that's not all of it, but if you keep those key settings in mind, your renders will be faster, you'll always have a backup when a file corrupts, and you won't have missing files when you share the blend file or open it on a different computer. Want to start your next project? Head over to BlenderEverything.com and grab yourself a project template with lighting, materials, and the basics set up for you, so you don't start from nothing.